Hello and welcome. This is a continuation of our Turbo series and today we'll talk about broadcasting. So we'll solve a case in which the user, there are two users and one of them uh, changes something on the one uh, web page in one browser and then what we would like to see is to have the same effect in the other browser because this is broadcasting and this will be performed over WebSockets. Hi Tomek. Hi Lukasz. <clears throat> yeah, so I think we can um, jump into the browser and straight away straight like away it. yeah <laughs> so uh for in, in the previous implementation let's say if you have two users that are looking at the projects board um you know that when one destroys the project here the second one and uh, doesn't see any change right so we can delete like three projects and the second user have to refresh the page to see the changes right <clears throat> and we actually would like to have a different um, different functionality. So the second user sees, um, sees changes in the real time, actually, right? And thanks to Turbo, we can have it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's jump into the code. <clears throat> so first thing we have to add, right, is in the index HTML. So the page where we displayed all the projects, we have to add the Turbo stream from and we define here the target, right? The projects. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's not the target, it's the streamable, uh, which is then mm, translated into a WebSocket address, right? So it tells me, hey, please uh, give me an update to the WebSocket called projects, let's say. Yeah, but it's kind of identifier, right? For the... for the Yeah, uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's correct, yeah. And that's then correct. in the projects controller, uh, we just have to add like the turbo stream channel broadcast remove to because we want to actually to remove the specific project when uh, we delete when we destroy this pro this project right mm -hmm. and now after those changes uh, let's refresh the page maybe if we destroyed any on the left hand side we can see immediately that on the right hand side the project is also removed from that table <clears throat> Magic, no JavaScript. Magic. No JavaScript. And if we go here, also, we remove the first one. Yeah, it was removed on both, right? That's great, actually. And that's, I think we also mentioned that right uh, last time, right? That we now we are working with web, web sockets, actually, with the Turbo streams yeah. and web sockets. But before we could do, we could have the same, like, not the behavior because it would not be a real time, but we. Um, but we were doing like um, turbo streams without web, web sockets. Now we are adding the web socket part, right? Yes, we're using the full package. And uh, why do we distinguish that um, all the time? And that's the, the reason is that um, when you look at the, okay, so, so let, me, let me rephrase myself. So we are saying that we are broadcasting, that we do it over web sockets and we are being very specific here, but uh, and why we do that? Because if you go to the documentation, it says that mm, you can come alive with turbo streams and it kind of mixes up the um, HTTP response as a turbo stream, but also the turbo uh, broadcasting, if I'm not mistaken. I hope uh -huh. I'm not. It uh -huh. does? It does. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Um, and this can be a little bit confusing. So that's why uh, we rather will say that we are broadcasting a change. Mm, okay. Mm, so that was just one thing I wanted to add. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think uh, from the code perspective, we like we added those um, broadcasting from the uh, directory in the controller, right? And also we can do it in a bit different way. Uh, for example, we could broadcast from the job or we can broadcast later, right? And we have like the uh, example here where we extend all projects deadline and we uh, do the broadcasting, uh, broadcast replace later uh, to the to the project. So we, like we are iterating through all projects. So we just added slip here to show you that it works. Um, so let's go to the browser. And now when we extend all projects deadline by week, you will see that the end date changes here, right? One after another. Uh, without sleep, it was just too fast and uh, could, could be confusing and maybe uh, would 
trigger some, I don't know, uh, confusion. But um, that, that's the only reason we had that slip. You don't need to do that in your production code whenever you call uh, the later. If you just uh, remove it, the sidekick will obviously, where is the sidekick here? Uh, it will handle this uh, situation without problem. And uh, yeah, that's the reason also, the slip is the reason why this page is taking so long because uh, each project, there's 200 projects, minus mm -hmm. two I think that Tomek deleted. Uh, so it's around 100 seconds to actually um, execute this. So uh, kind of long, but uh, yeah, that's another way to do it, right? You can broadcast replays later too. So it will be uh, scheduled as a job, but also uh, as Tomek mentioned, you could extract it to separate job and then just call the broadcast replace to no uh, no later. And uh, but in this case, I mean, it's uh, it would be a little bit overhead to just introduce an abstraction to call the exactly the same code. So we just wanted to show that uh, if Tomek stops sidekick, uh, it wouldn't uh, this change wouldn't be visible in the table. But we'll just leave it up to you, to your experimentation. You can find the um, the code as usual in the task app repository in the Argency GitHub. And if, we, okay. if you do it from the job, it will be job, you know, triggering job <laughs> and so on. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and I think the the last thing we wanted to show you uh, is in, I've seen the uh, Git log message. It's like, we have to tell about this as well, Tomek. So yeah, let's tell about it. I'm not it, right? proud of what I did, but I did that. <laughs> so as you can see, um, you can also use the uh, hooks such as after commit, after create commit in this uh, example, uh, which you can use to uh, this hook to actually broadcast. Uh, in this case, I decided to use the prepend to Mm, projects and uh, you, we specify target here. That's why in the initially when Tomek said this project is target, um, I said uh, that uh, we need to be more specific because target is the table body that we will prepend the this um, object to. And as you can see, as the locals, we pass the project as self because this is done from the from the object itself. And uh, to demonstrate how it works, we haven't prepared the UI for creating projects, but maybe that's even better because we can use the console. Um, that most likely would look better than the UI that I would create. And Tomek mm, as well. Yeah. Uh, backend is in our heart. But um, let's see how it behaves. As you can see, this message uh, below commit, the action cable actually was used to broadcast uh, to projects. And now if you go back to the browser, we can actually see that without refresh, our new project has appeared, which is great. Yep. Mm. All right. So uh, that's almost it. But there's one mm -hmm. more thing that you should watch out, right? Yeah, and I think that's the streamable name, right? <clears throat> Here. Yes, um, it works in this demo, but if you have, because there was only one user, actually there's no user in this app, we just display the data. But if there was a user that owned some projects or there was a tenant or account or whatever you call it, which owns something, some entity, then you cannot do it like this because uh, I mean, you cannot do it like this. It's very ab it's abbreviation. Uh, I mean, you shouldn't uh, name your um, Turbo Stream from as a project, and that's it. You need to create a unique uh, WebSocket for each of the uh, user account or whatever the distinction is. Um, maybe a department, if you just use it in your organization, you get the idea. So we would have to modify it and specify some unique identifier. Uh, for example, yeah, we could use the tenant ID, right? And then we would modify it as well in the um, in the index HTML, the Turbo Stream from. If you go there, Tomek, uh, in the, ah, yeah, the yeah, yeah, index, yeah. Uh, don't sleep. <laughs> I was thinking about some. <clears throat> <laughs> 
maybe you'd like to share with us. Yeah, uh, I will. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah, as you can see, this is the modifi modification that we have to have. Uh, obviously, in our case, uh, we're not going to run the page with this change because it will break. But in your project, this is one thing that you should always remember about. Otherwise, you will do it like we did. You will stream the changes to every user and uh, that may have sad consequences. Yes, <clears throat> because uh, like like Lukas mentioned, not here, yeah, here. So in the, our de demo application, we like uh, we are working like an, in a single tenant, let's say, so all uh, users could see those projects, right? So we like we are operating on on the some set of projects for those. Uh, so so all those users that uh, use this project, let's say this uh, um, application should see all the projects, right, and all the changes. <clears throat> but then if you are going to have the multi-tenancy, for example, you have to somehow uh, specify the set of projects that are only for your tenant, because then even though we have here like uh, here like target, which is project, which is with specific ID, um, it's, it's correct, I mean, you would see your project's ID with your project removed from the table, let's say, but then the data always go to the other um, users as well, right? So you can like leak data, even if they don't see the change because they don't see the specific project in the table because it's filtered by tenant. For example, we display only those for the, for the specific tenant. And uh, we still would get the message with the project that is not in our tenant, right? So we could somehow see it so the, the data would leak. Um, here yeah in the network tab <clears throat> yeah exactly you would see the socket and even though to some extent they wouldn't have a d effect but you could see the super user or just a user that has some it background they could see uh, the data which is not good and uh, i think we also discussed one thing right that it's it was not so obvious when we were working with the without the web sockets right because if we have web sockets all the people connected to uh, to this to those projects let's say will see the changes right mm -hmm. but if we were like in the previous episode when we are talking about the <clears throat> approach without web, without web sockets so we have just the request and the response we 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 there we could actually have something like projects right because it was only in the scope of the request so it was always just our projects right right we didn't have to let's say have this uh, identifier yeah but you're for, talking about the yeah. turbo frames right yeah and yeah exactly. yeah mm -hmm. okay yeah to, to be specific it's not about we could have it in the uh, turbo stream from we couldn't have it that would be a mistake mm -hmm. but we could have we don't need this approach in the turbo frame so if we create a turbo frame tag we don't need to give it projects underscore tenant id or user id uh, because this change this um, turbo frames are not propagated but whenever you call the turbo stream from there you create a web socket and this is actually propagated for your app so if you uh, exactly. have a name that is not unique it will not be unique meaning that everyone will see the changes and you need to answer yourself if this is what you want because maybe some kind of apps you would like to have it for example in e-commerce where you will be when in which you would be streaming the um, number of av available items or products uh, to your customers' web pages, right? That, that's uh -huh. different scenario. Yeah. Okay, right. I think we covered uh, the whole topic today, right? Yes, thanks. Thanks for watching. Uh, remember to subscribe. If you have any questions regarding Turbo, we'll be happy to answer in the next video uh, or the next after, it depends, but uh, <laughs> we will not ignore you. Uh, so uh, once again, thanks for watching, leave a comment and see you next week. Thank you, see ya.